Welcome to Utopia. Is it really possible to find Utopia in a bottle? However, it may be illegal in 15 states. Well, let's find out. Welcome back to Old Fashioned Ways Plus Plus. Today we are doing a review, but not just any review of a whiskey. Today we are going off the beaten path and we're doing a review of a beer. You unexpected genius. Is that whiskey? You're probably thinking, WTF. But hold on, hold on. Before you unsubscribe, hear me out. Oh, what the hell? Hear me out. So I had the opportunity to get this bottle of Sam Adams 2023 release of Utopia. I'm going to be honest. I first passed on it, but then it haunted me in my dreams that night. So I decided I'd go ahead and grab a bottle, but it was too late. It was gone. I thought, oh, well, wasn't a whiskey. Wasn't meant to be, right? But then during one of my casual strolls through a liquor store, I saw it in the case. I almost passed on it again, but that haunted dream ran through my head. So I grabbed it. Sam Adams Utopia is an extreme barrel aged beer that pushes the limits of how beer is made and enjoyed. This boundary bending barrel aged beer blurs line between beer and fine spirits. At 28% ABV, it is the badass of their brewery. Its reputation puts it on every beer drinker's bucket list. Do you have a bucket list? No. Let's pour a little out, set it aside, and continue to discuss this Utopia 2023 release. Now, I did get these special glasses that is recommended for drinking this beer. So let's see if I can open this up and get that out. Man, back is tough. So let's pour some of this out into this special glass. Oh wow, it's got a bottle top on it. Wouldn't have guessed that. So I wasn't expecting that, but I found an old school bottle opener. Oh, that does smell pretty divine. A little bit like Utopia. I guess I'll put this back on here. I don't know how well it's staying. So as we put this bad boy to the side, let it breathe a little bit. The 2020 release is introducing a Pino de Charentes cast finish. I'll make sure to leave that here. You can tell me how to correctly pronounce that. But it's a cast finish adding honey and vanilla. This is along with their traditional bourbon, ruby port, and Carcavelos cask. I'll leave that here too. To round out the complexity while adding supple notes of peatiness smokiness, they also finish it in scotch and peated whiskey casks. Holy cow, that's a lot going on in one little bottle, huh? Nominal cosmic powers! They state that the devils are in the details. The ABV on this bad boy is 28%, giving it superpowers of strength and gets better with age. They state that some of the beer in this extreme reserve spends up to 30 years in bourbon barrels. Holy cow. It is brewed collaboratively with all head brewers passing through every single Sam Adams brewery. Because of its high alcohol content, Utopia is illegal in 15 states. I'm making it illegal. I'll list all the states right here. They say it's blended to perfection and there's so much more to read on this. I will leave a link below in the description if you want to read all the rest of it. Of course, because I am sampling this, I will be giving away samples. That's only if you want me to give away samples. What do you want? I, want some. I know it's not a whiskey and I'm not a beer channel, but you let me know in the comments below, would you like a chance to win a sample of this? To review, we're gonna be using my standard scoring review of one through 10 on aroma, flavors, complexity, mouthfeel, finish, and would I buy it again? So let's get into the fun part. Let's start nosing and tasting this. Now, it doesn't say online whether you should be drinking this chilled or at room temperature, but I guess because it's more like a spirit, I'm doing this at room temperature. Let's look at this bad boy. Ooh, it is nice and dark. I don't know if you can see how dark that is, but I can't see through it. Oh, wow. It has some legs. It takes a while for these legs to form on this and they're slow dripping. That is nice and viscous on this glass. So. Let's go in for aroma. Let's nose this. Ooh, that is a lot to take in with that nose. Very, very interesting. There's a lot to this. So I'm gonna try to take this a little bit slow, but make this video short too. There's chocolate, there's cherry. There's like a wine nose to this, like a dark red wine and something like yeasty in a way, like when you make bread and you're letting it rise and the way it smells as, you're, as you put that bread together and you kind of beat it up and you're just letting it sit there to rise, has that kind of a yeasty smell to it. But wow, that chocolate and cherry just strong up front with that nice little wine there. Wow. For aroma, I'm gonna give that a seven. Let's go in for the initial taste, flavor. So 
So that cherry he does hit you pretty upfront. Then you get chocolatiness, a lot of chocolatiness, like kind of like when you're drinking a glass of chocolate milk you made with powder, right? But you get to that bottom part of it and you have that last little drink that's kind of the, the powder that didn't get mixed into the drink very well. So you take that last sip and that powder coats your tongue with chocolate, right? That's what that reminds me of. Um, and that was just my first drink. Lots of complexity in there, lots of flavors and there's just so much more that I could not get on that first drink. I need to go in for that second. So for initial taste, I'm gonna give that a six and a half. Now, I always love the second taste, the complexity. How does it evolve on the tongue? Because that's when my tongue's already had it on there and it's acclimated a little bit. So I get to taste more of the flavors. At least that's what I'm hoping. So definitely a lot more flavor on that second one. You do have a lot of fruitiness in there, like a plum. That's that's what it is. That's what that taste was. I didn't notice in the beginning the first time, but I, I knew it was back there. So you get that plum and chocolate flavor in there. It does dry your tongue a little bit, like a, a wine does, you know, like some of those little bit kind of a medium dry wine. That's something that's so dry that, that it dries it so much, but not something that does not dry it either. Flavors from the front to the, well, it's funny. It's flavors from the front to mid and light on the back but lots of complexity in this. So for complexity, I'm gonna give this a six. Let's go in for that third sip and do the mouthfeel. Thickness and viscosity on this. I'm gonna tell you there's a lot of viscosity because it's still on my tongue right now. Besides the drying agent of it, like how it kind of dries it, it is very thick and viscous, especially as I was saying on the front and the mid palate, but a little bit on not so much in the back. So it really coats the top of my tongue very well, the front and the middle, coats the roof of my mouth a little bit, nothing on the cheeks, but very, a very good mouthfeel, except for that drying. And I've never been one to enjoy a very dry wine. I know there's people out there that love that, but that's not been me. I know my wife likes dry wines, but so because of that, it's gonna get lowered a little bit because of that drying effect it has on me, but there is great vi uh, viscosity and thickness in my mouth. That's kind of hard. Where am I gonna put this? You know where to put it? I know where to put it. I was thinking between a five and a six. Let's go with a 5.5. Now, finish. How it stays in the tongue and finishes. Let's go in for that. So a lot of that chocolate has kind of gone away now. I'm tasting more of that fruitiness, like the plum, the wine. Ooh. I don't know if you've ever had a, a, a wine that's kind of a fruit wine where you go and it's, you know, it's made more with the fruit instead of with grapes. And that's actually what I got in that last, that's that last sip there. Like one of those fruit wines you get, but more of a plum with the cherry kind of taste to it. I do like that. Still a little bit drying. Finish is there though. I mean, it's still going and going and going. I still have it. Still the taste of my mouth, so nice and strong there. So for the finish, I'm gonna give that a six. Big question, would I buy this again? Well, MSRP for this is $240. That's an expensive beer. Probably the most expensive I've ever bought for a beer. However, there are a few things to consider. One, it's supposed to be drank like a spirit in small amounts and enjoyed. I haven't figured out if I'm supposed to chill it or not, but it's actually really good at room temperature. I'm enjoying it at room temperature. It's supposed to get better with age. Supposedly, don't have to refrigerate, doesn't go bad. As you let it sit in here, it's gonna get better. So, I wanna come back and revisit this. But at $240, that's that's a lot to pay for, for a whiskey, even more so for a beer, especially because I'm not much of a beer drinker anymore. I used to love beer, but I don't drink it as much anymore. But this is a, this is a beer that's very complex and very different. So I'm kind of struggling with that. Would I buy again? I kind of want to buy an older one just to compare it and see if it does get better with age. Because I'm going to have to wait at least a year to try this again to see, does it improve? But at $240, oof, I don't think I'd buy again and have a second on my shelf. 240 just seems like a lot. I know 30 years in the bourbon barrel. I know it goes through all the distilleries. I know everybody has a hand in it. I know it has a lot of finishes and that all adds to cost. It's a beautiful bottle. I mean, look at this thing. Shiny, beautiful, front opens and closes like that. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful presentation. But it's not about the presentation. It's about the juice inside, right? And it's good juice. But is it $240 juice? It's not to me. Maybe in a year, maybe it would be. Maybe if I'm just strictly a beer drinker, maybe it would be. But would I buy again at $240? That's gonna be a low score. Um, I'm gonna give that 3.5. So after adding this up, I gave it a 34.5 out of 60. Have you tried this? What do you think? Would you go and buy a bottle of this at $240? If not, maybe you want a chance to win a sample. So let me tell you how you can. Of course, 
first go and hit that like button and it really helps me. Then I want you to comment below and use bucket list and put what is on your bucket list of either a beer or a whiskey to try. I would like to know. Also again, as a favorite, please share this video. For some reason, YouTube loves that. It really helps me get out there. Care to share? draw and see who's the winner if you want to be a winner of who could win a sample of this this was definitely a different journey out of my normal but was it utopia you'll have to be the judge at that thank you again for joining me on another journey down the utopian rabbit hole now i get to go and check one off my bucket list that i didn't even know i had but i check it nonetheless cheers my friend to our next journey 